Hey everyone. Hi. Welcome to Creative Happy Hour, where we get drunk on the creative possibilities each and every week. Yes, we do indeed. Yes, we do. This week we are drinking CBD gin and tonic. <laughs> and why are we doing that? We're doing that because we are talking about the rise of the modern cult brand. Yes. We're going to be using Gwyneth Paltrow and Goop and other brands besides as an example of what we're doing. And then we're going to tell you how to kind of profit from cult mentality as a creative. Yeah. Creative entrepreneur. Exactly. Some people may call it. Exactly. Others so people call it a cult. Exactly. <laughs> right. Cult, creative, yeah. maybe the same. So we're, we're just going to, we're going to dissect it and see what you think. We will indeed. And first we're going to taste yes. this lovely gin and tonic with gin the and CBD. Tonic with and, we will, CBD. and we'll tell you all about it. And so. we got the recipe off of Goop website. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Okay. Well, that's nice and refreshing. Oh, yeah, it is nice. nice. Right? Yeah. We and like CBD, it. we'll keep our anxiety levels exactly. low. Exactly. We'll be super chill. We're going to be like, why are they so calm? What's going on? Yeah, when we realize that we're not part of the right... <laughs> right? Of the right cult, of the yeah. right tribe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about our drink today. Yes. Um, so our CBD gin and tonic. Yes. What we did is that we didn't, so a lot of times gin and tonic is focused on the citrus and we did not do that. No. We didn't include a lime. You'll see that we have a um, basil leaf. It should have been a mint leaf, but it's not. We so. only had basil. So well, that's that what we, we had. So sorry. Gwyneth says to put a marijuana leaf, but I didn't have access to that today. So, sorry. I mean, we do live in California. I so. know. I, I was lazy. I don't know. I was busy going around looking for wellness shots and <laughs> spending a lot of wellness money. Yeah. Because we all think we're getting sick. It's really bad. Yeah. Well, I am getting yeah. sick, but I, I've been I taking think, Zycam. Right? We're going to be I mean, fine. if Zycam wants to sponsor us. They probably should because yeah. we've been filming every Monday since January. Yeah. Much. We've so Not, we're eating Zycam constantly because we we're constantly <laughs> getting sick. Yeah, and Thieves Oil also. You should probably, yeah. you know, sponsor us. And then the brand of CBD, which I bought and now I put it away. So I don't know. But I don't want to make I've any I've never story. had CBD. Right. So, well, usually, okay. So usually if you're making a cocktail, if we were doing this completely right, I would have used a CBD tincture. Mm -hmm. um, and a tincture being that it's uh, dissolved in alcohol mm -hmm. rather than in oil. And they didn't have that available because... That's what these are. These are tinctures. Well, this whole thing is a tincture. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, I just did the really delicious Fever Tree tonic water that we I love. I love Fever Tree tonic yes, water. Yes, and it's plain, so yeah, plain so. not, not citrus, which sometimes I would use citrus if mm. I was making a normal gin and tonic. Mm. And then our wonderfully herbal Hendrix gin. I love that stuff too. Which we love. And then I used a CBD oil, and the oil can have a really strong taste. Yeah. It can have an herbal taste, but this one, they disguise the taste with a mint chocolate. Chocolate mint. Yeah. So it's it actually goes quite well. It does. Interestingly it enough, does. with the, the tonic and the gin. Absolutely. I'm, yeah. I'm shocked, actually. Right. No, I think it's great. I think we're it's it's a more successful... Because um, <laughs> when you were putting it in there, I was like, You're like okay, oh my God. I don't know how I feel about it's that. It's better than the fat washing because oh, that was really gross. It didn't stop me from drinking No, that. I know. Me neither. But, you know, or the, or the sugar high we got last time. But, oh, my yeah, God. This that is, was, yeah. yeah. This is good. This is actually, I mean, I would drink this again. And so there's a bar in L.A. called Gracias Madre, which was the first bar in the country to start doing CBD cocktails. The oh. lawyer, the minute they, you know, legalized this stuff. Yeah. And by the way, let me just put out there that we're not getting high and drunk today. CBD is non-psychoactive, so it's right. not like we're going to start acting Nothing's crazy. Gonna happen. We might chill out a little bit more than usual. We're, but that's we're too it. tired to Yeah, none of this get stuff. Crazy. No. Get crazy. No, crazy. We're not going to get crazy. Um, but the Gracias Madre, their lawyer was on it right away. They started serving these cocktails, but now they're being told that they're not allowed again. So there's oh, lots interesting. Of, yeah. I and wonder then, why. Um, huh. I it's just the state laws and then the different food laws and things mm. like that. So I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm guessing that eventually. And then I think some of the drugstores they like just haven't Walgreens, regulated things quite yes. yet up to yeah. like the standards of exactly. So like Walgreens or CVS is going to start carrying some CBD stuff, but it was going to be like this month or next month. And oh. so I had to go to Pharmaca. And oh, okay. uh, so that was where I went. Um, I think you can get it at Whole Foods too. Nope. You couldn't? Nope. Oh, they don't so, carry it. Mm -mm. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. 
That's what every, well, at, everybody at, was telling at me. At the market open. down here, the what is the one in um, Woodland Market? They had CBD, Woodland, they had CBD water. Yes, Woodland Market, I believe, has it. Yeah. But uh, that's not where I was, and I'm very lazy about grocery shopping, so I got it at Pharmaca. So there you go. But it works really well. I recommend making it exactly the way we did. Maybe, I mean, I think even the basil leaf works. Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I think it. gin and tonic is a very, you know, it's a classic drink. It is. So we kind of wanted to talk about, you know, some classic basic concepts exactly and, and it's a little medicinal the tonic yeah. idea brings up that medicinal yeah. idea that Gwyneth which, Paltrow has espoused which, yeah we're you know we're feeling a little under the weather so yes. you know we <laughs> are having a giant tincture exactly and, and it's really nice and, and I had nice. some wellness shots today so we're talking about these tincture we're, tinctures we're talking about shots we're talking about the CBD stuff we're adopting this lingo. We're of, talking about wellness culture. Yes. We have very obviously espoused this wellness culture, which is just as much a religion as anything else, I yeah. believe. And so we also, one of the other articles that we read this week that we thought was interesting was the one about millennials. Yeah. And how higher numbers than ever of millennials are actually going into the church to be nuns. To Yeah, to the order of Yes. Yeah. And that was fascinating to us. And I think well, you know, were, my immediate response to that was like, yeah, she's lazy. like, because millennials are lazy. And I was like, well, I don't think that's exactly it. I think that they're just looking for more and they're looking to kind of pierce these mysteries in a more complete way. Like they're looking to be all in. They're looking also to have someone make a meal for them because they don't want to do it themselves. Well, yeah, they're looking to be <laughs> fed a meaning, like they want a meaning of life. They want to be right. given, they want to be told that it's okay. They want to be told that they belong. They well, yeah, be because told... they are the first really, the first fallout culture where, I mean, we can't say this in a gen in general mm -hmm. terms mm -hmm. because there are still, you know, lots of communities across the country that are very Bible Beltish. Yeah. And, but well, I would yeah. say that, you know, the millennials are the first real culture where, yeah, th there was no, you know, uh, religion in school, you know, like they right. really. Right. And the U.S. was built on religion. I mean, we're a very yeah. religious society. And God society. we trust. And God we trust everywhere you look. It's, you know, God, God bless America. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even if you weren't brought up religious, the whole religious framework is just all of the structures and all of that iconography is very familiar to us. I mean, it's just basically bred into us no matter what. So I think it becomes very familiar and that's why brands start to use those religious yeah. fundamentals and the brands are becoming the new religions. And like Gwyneth Paltrow, her whole goop thing is definitely a religion and you know, but so it's we looked all, at it. But it's all pumped through the machine mm -hmm. of capitalism. Absolutely. So Absolutely. you know it, it's so uh hard to I mean I don't think it's that hard, but I, I do think that you could very easily get caught up in something like this Oh yeah, and take it verbatim. Well, yeah, when... that's why people join a cult because right. they do the verbatim things. But then it's really hard for people not to join the cult when all of these marketers have become more and more wise to how to make, how to build their own cult. Yeah, I mean, in there's a very cult, real way. There's cult psychology, and I think that's all of it. All yeah. of it. So we're gonna tell you guys later later today, towards the end, we're gonna tell you guys actually how to how to start a cult. And not for evil, but for good. So as a creative or a creative entrepreneur, how to take those cult mentality things and kind of use them to create your creative community or your, yeah, or or your, your brand yes. or your product. Or Absolutely. Your... So we're going to do that. But in the meantime, we're talking about Gwyneth and why is she such that major figure when we look at people who've made a brand into a religion? Mm -hmm. Why does she kind of pop out above everybody else? And I think that part of it is that she's so out there. Yeah, I also think it's she's so homogenous. Like she's tall, white, blonde. Yes. Yeah, she's easy to 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 feel well for the, for the white American women. Yeah, who are calling her. She's, she's like an easy. Yeah, she's not too edgy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, she's just aspirational enough. And I think yeah. that that's another interesting thing that they say that people who join cults are typically middle-class mainstream people are the ones who do yeah. join the cult. So that's an important thing of like, okay, identify who is your potential mm -hmm. culty, you know, yeah. who, who, who are your people and how do you become just aspirational enough to those people? How do you define them and how are they going to want to be defined? What do they want? And what Gwyneth's people want is that they're women. 
they're middle class women or like they've been told that they're hysterical. They've been told that what they want is not is real. not possible. Is that not they possible. want too much. Yeah. Been to, actually, I think women, you know, are modern day women have been told they want too much. They want to have kids. Yes. They want to work. They want to they, look good. They, they want to feel They want to look good. Mm -hmm. They want to stay youthful. They want, yeah. you know, they, and, and what I think she offers is this have it story all. Mm -hmm. of, you, you can have great looking skin, a great mm -hmm. looking body. You can be totally spiritually intact. Mm -hmm. You can have, pure, 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 pure. Yeah. You can be very pure. You can be spiritual. You can also have lots of game at work mm -hmm. and be mm -hmm. super successful at your job. Right. I mean, she, I mean, honestly, like, I don't know why I'm not signing up. <laughs> what the hell's my problem? <laughs> Karen? I don't know. Seriously. I mean, you just need to buy some Lululemons, get your CBD infused water and, and some crystals and you're going to be good. I yeah, mean, right? settle down, settle down. Just, you know, stop rebelling. I need against... to do tree pose more often. You do. If you did that, you'd be grounded. Yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of being grounded. So the other thing that I think that Gwyneth Paltrow gets is that she's so outrageous that she she has attained the martyrdom that is necessary for a cult or religion. So, yeah. you know, how do you become the purest possible? You murder yourself. You become, you know, Christ or Kanye West. We were talking about Kanye West, yeah. who's now doing Sunday services, but like he had to have his breakdown, which he reframed as a breakthrough sure. for people to I actually start really, like oddly enough, the minute you get as weird as possible is when people start believing in you. Like, how does that happen? You know, even Tony Robbins, who was mega successful mm -hmm. and very culty, but I think that he has gone through this martyrdom with his whole sexual um, harassment thing right now, and yeah. I think he's going to come out the other end. Joel Osteen. With he's going to, they're going to come out on the other side even better. Even richer. Yeah. <laughs> even richer. Remember, this is all being better pumped equals through richer. the capitalistic yes, exactly. machine. Yes, exactly. So money better equals richer. Crazy goes in, mm -hmm. money comes out the You're other so side. You're so right. You're so right. It does. Yeah. And you, as a creative, can do that as well. Yeah. You, just you know, to... as a creative, you've been told that you, again, that you're weird, that you don't, you know, yeah, that you want strange you things, you don't fit in. Yeah. And that's the other thing is that business is not about, you know, making people feel difference of making them feel that they're belonging yes so that's kind that is, of major. that is that is the 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 main probably the main criteria totally that's being a huge a cult. yeah huge it's criteria like, that, exactly. it, like everything is pointing to yes. belonging belonging is yeah it's key key absolutely key yeah so when Gwyneth murdered herself she murdered herself because she started going overboard in the weirdness yeah. and in the white woman out of touchness and in the, you know, like completely, and people started mocking her. What Gwyneth knows is if you mock her and if you talk about her, Kanye also, we mentioned him yeah. a few episodes you, ago. You look up her articles and her websites and you share it with your friends. It's eyeballs. You're like, can you believe this crazy yeah. bitch? Yeah, it's eyeballs. As she says, it's eyeballs. Everybody who's mocking her, everybody who's looking her up, mm -hmm. it's eyeballs and she is converting those people. And so convert mm -hmm. is a word that is for marketing and sales, but it's also for religion. And that's what mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. absolutely doing with the crazy. So we wanted to talk about a few, uh, first of all, we were gonna- I mean, it's absolutely brilliant. It is brilliant it's what she that. does. And she knows it, like she's the first person, well, one of the first to be able to literally put out, so she puts out information. Mm -hmm. She then records how many eyeballs are on each piece of information and then pumps out products to based meet, on that. Meet the criteria. Yeah, so she's yeah. really, I mean, it's, it's an amazing machine. And, but that's something that we can absolutely learn from, you know, and we were going to joke yeah. about what we're wearing. About. Oh, yes. Yeah, so tell us, this, tell us about your this Gwyneth Paltrow is, collection. Yes, this um, is the top. Gwyneth Paltrow collection. I love it. Um, I love it. It looks really special. She, yes, it yeah. is. <laughs> it has a mandala. Oh, I'm concentrating yeah. on it. I feel a beaded, pure. A beaded mandala that I is, feel more spiritual already. Just yeah, I mean, it's and amazing. the mandala is essentially this, you know, it's this circle that you can kind of meditate on. And it it kind of changes your vibrate your vibration really. I'm, I mean, it really I'm does. Convinced. So there's different frequencies that are built into this mandala. It's a healing mandala. No wonder you paid two thousand dollars. I for know. That shirt. That's and, so great. And so okay. basically, you know, and there's other aspects to it that are are very much you know, tuned to my own frequency. And you know how I love frequencies. I know you do. I know. So, you, yeah. Every morning with the tuning fork, you're going, you select your fiber to frequency. Totally. <laughs> and so this really spoke to me on yes. all energy chakras. And on the group website. Where on the group website where yeah. I first saw. It vibrated right there. That these were available. Amazing. And I just. You just went for it. You went I did for because it. I didn't really even have to go all the way to no, like God the Indian no. village. Yeah. Where these 
you know, everything was being no. blessed. And you didn't and even have to go over. to the in-group health no, like, you know, like events where everybody else was wearing them. And, like, no. you had to have them. Everybody had to get, you I know. just ordered it. That's amazing. That's, yeah. I mean, see, just, like, you're, you're up here, but it's easy. You, it's just easy to download. <laughs> the, the perfect. So I'm wearing, it just looks like a normal white T-shirt and, and yes. a linen shirt, but it's not. It was harvested by Himalayan nuns. Well, it's obvious to me. By Moonlight. Well, they were in the middle of their periods while they were doing it. Oh, mm -hmm. so they were on their moon cycle. They were on their moon cycle, yeah. and they had um, quartz, rose quartz, jade eggs shoved up their hoo has because <laughs> that really makes them vibrate differently when they're it does. when they're 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 hand picking the cotton. Yes, it and does. Combing it. Yeah, so this was five hundred and forty-five dollars, which I think is also kind of a number that means something. I have to read it. Yeah, I have to read it on the on the Gwyneth Paltrow website. She's yeah, so me ten it plus four. I mean, yeah, so five. Right? Yeah, so it's it adds up to five. So in numerology, it's a transitional number. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling yeah. very transitional in this look. Well, I, I mean that's yeah, it I looks mean pure, right? It, Doesn't it? Do it, I look more pure it, in this? It looks like you could add something or take something away. Yes. I feel pure though. It's, I like. I think it's, it's all about. It's pure, yeah, and it's plus or minus. Totally. Oh it's, my God, you're so right. You know, it's it's if and it's if and it's if it's and. not it's not and or it's if and it's if I like it. I like yeah. it. So, no, it looks really good. Right? Doesn't it? Yours looks I amazing feel, too. I feel like it's a, just a clean. It's a fresh clean look. I just feel like to the it just kind of goes like we've got the vibration here and then the the clean palette. Here. Yeah, and, and it just can good. like reflect mm -hmm. back and forth and really Absolutely. balance our chakras. Totally, it's yeah. important. So and it then, was very you know well thought out and I thought so. And then I did my Gwyneth you know middle part with like some organic oil on my hair and then I bleached really my good. eyebrows yeah it's good. really good yeah, I, I didn't so. even I didn't get that involved <laughs> but that's good because when it I says, was like Zycam powder Zycam I, I was I was much more Gwyneth I did the turmeric and then I did some more CBD and mm. I did some aloe juice and um I think I spent yeah. like 60 bucks on my hey, if she today. runs out with like Explosive diarrhea. Don't Probably. be alarmed. Well, no, that's just cleansing. That's detox. Yeah, it is. It's it's <laughs> actually detox. It's actually something you want to if, aspire to. Yeah, have. if you're feeling like crap, that's detox. Yeah, it's move perfect. it out. Yeah, just move, move it out. out. Sense. I love it. Yeah. So let's talk about Gwyneth's biggest, most egregious movements and ideas and products that she yeah. put out there because these were on her path to martyrdom, and they're also on her path to multi gazillionairedom. Yeah, same thing. Martyr, pumping in the crazy. Yep. Put the money, money in out. your pocket. Exactly. So she did. So the first one, I mentioned the jade eggs up the uh, hoo-ha. Yeah. That was a good one. She told women that basically you should shove these eggs, so either rose quartz or jade, mm -hmm. up your hoo-ha. It's going to make you much more feminine. It's going to balance well, out it, your vibrations. It's, yeah, it's supposed to strengthen your pelvic floor. That too. Which, therefore, will make your orgasm experience more powerful right. which therefore will connect you mm -hmm. to the earth shattering gods of the feminine power <laughs> yes. and goddess there energy go. oh my god i mean i, I could have written already. a fucking article are you wearing one right now <laughs> wouldn't Never you like to know <laughs> <laughs> but that's something that i think i mean she I, didn't invent that though she did not invent that and she espoused but it as you it was, said mm -hmm. She made it mainstream. She made it mainstream. She made something so obscure. Yes. Mainstream. Yes, she did. She made something that was even kind of shocking to discuss. She made it mainstream. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that's actually kind of a good creative lesson because yeah. if you have something that you're kind of into, if you find something a little shocking, and if you can mainstream that conversation mm -hmm. or mainstream that product, that's kind of a really great exercise for you to do because there's no competition. I mean, nobody else is doing it. Right. And if you can make that your own, I mean, why the heck not? So yeah. then the other thing she did is she talked about conscious uncoupling. Remember when she was getting Oh, divorced? yeah. that's She's super famous for that. She's very famous for the conscious yeah. uncoupling. And everybody's like, what an out-of-touch white bitch. And yeah. she's like, no, no. I'm trying to make this more civilized. I'm trying to make this more positive. And I mean, God bless her. I mean, really. And I think as creatives, I mean, you were saying about reframing you know, an issue. But oh, yeah. I mean, but you, you turn something, you know, you turn the, the frown upside down. I mean, you, totally. you reframe yeah. the narrative mm -hmm. and then you have a complete start over. You exactly. Know? Yeah. So all of a sudden, something that is is considered, you know, like a divorce, it's mm -hmm. considered to be like a, a trauma. Yes. Or she turned around and said, no, it's not a trauma. This is a conscious thing that exactly. I'm doing. It's a reset. To, it's a reset. It's mm -hmm. a recalibration. Mm -hmm. And... 
you know, and that's, we're gonna make it positive. We're gonna yeah, make it work. And she's the queen of pivoting. She you really know, is. She's the queen of pivoting, yes. and that you know, that's, and that's another what major thing that we said. Andy yeah. Pizza talks about in that six, Pod Crush. Andy yeah, Pizza Pod Crush talks about yeah pivoting. Yeah. That's a no, major yeah, a major and thing. she pivots constantly. Absolutely, because the minute you pivot. stop mocking her for for the jade eggs. She's gonna pivot to some other crazy, some other thing. insane. Thing. So the next one that she did was the fifteen thousand dollar gold sex toy. Right. So then she's telling us that well, she's saying take charge of your pleasure. Take charge that, of your that, pleasure. That and you're in worth fact, it. it's valuable. Your yeah. pleasure is valuable, and she symbolizes it by gold money yeah all of it but also she's saying don't be afraid to ask for an outrageous amount of money for something that's got this concept behind it so right for you artists out there i mean that's she's giving where, you permission yeah. to give your money to her well she's giving you permission to, but you should give people permission to give their money to you yes as a creative i mean so many of us creatives kind of think that money is this embarrassing thing that it's not the main you know product that we're we're creatives and we the creation is what's important but we need to live and why yeah. live badly when you can live well? I mean, it's, you know, show people that there's value to something. Don't be afraid to ask for it. And don't be afraid yeah. to, you know, kind of put it out there. And people will ridicule you. People ridiculed her. But, you know, I'll bet you a bunch of people bought that stupid $15,000. Oh, oh, for sure. I'll for bet. sure. I'll bet. I, I mean, I right? would love to know who bought it. But anyway, I don't really care that much. But, but, no, but I, I think there, but I think, you know, again, she's kind of reframing this, mm -hmm. you know, the, this story that just because it's, you know, a sex toy or it's pleasurable mm -hmm. doesn't mean it can't be the highest quality, exactly. the most beautiful thing. It's like jewelry. Exactly. It's, it's like jewelry. It's an accessory. It's just to, as valuable. It's like, yeah. let's, let's reframe our values. Let's see what's But again, it's the us. value of capitalism. It's not, totally. it's not value because it's like, oh, I mean, she, she merges it with, yes, she with does. this well, that's personal the expertise value. that she has. It's yeah. absolutely incredible. How I don't think she she's alone this. in this little empire that she's building. Oh, she's building. so not alone. But she yeah. has built this team of people that support her mm -hmm. in all of the stuff mm -hmm. she says. And she'll find exactly that testimonial. And that's another thing that is creative. Is like, yeah. get that testimonial. Get that person, the dodgy expert, who's willing to back you no matter how crazy what well, you're saying is. I think as creatives we often think like oh well if we put like a monetary value on it that it's not as creative right but it is like and, it is and that's a that's it's a common value. historical theme I think with totally. creative people they're like oh if we put a number on it mm -hmm. then it's not as creative Right, but it is. It, it's it like becomes a you're product. Just, right, but but it is a product. Let's just be realistic. Everything yeah. is a product. And as we talked about in the AI episode, mm -hmm. you know, this whole there's going to be an entire paradigm shift. Yes. With the jobs that people are going to totally. have, and you're you're going to have to be creative. I mean, yes. that is and that is you, essentially the future. Yeah, and if you start to kind of put your value up and like state your value straight up early on, yeah. that's good. And I don't mean and so and Gwyneth so then Gwyneth doesn't only go all up here she also has a thing about grounding so i was mm. telling you when you were saying you didn't feel great i was like you should go walk barefoot yeah <laughs> in the dog earthing. poo outside earthing. earthing yeah it's earthing yeah mm -hmm. we go walk barefoot you know catch a few e coli a little bit of i did that as a kid and one time i was in the city i was in Pet san francisco partying with my friend and i had these beautiful high heel shoes oh my God. i'm gonna do a little story diversion here we like stories and you know we were having so much fun that my my heel broke off of my shoe. Ow. So here I am in San Francisco. Okay, but grounding is not like, mm -hmm. you know, needles. Yeah, and, <laughs> and check it out. I had to carry my shoes because I got, what am I going to walk on? No. Yeah, so I ended up stepping in like a loogie. I was like instantly sober. That's instantly so sober. And I told my friend, I'm like, get in the car. <laughs> We're leaving this fucking city. Right? Like I so went, I mean, I've t I'm a dental Professional. Oh, so I have taken all the classes. I've taken all the classes. I know exactly what's in that. That's disgusting stuff. Okay. So oh I God. went home and I bleached my foot. No shit. And she was like, what are you doing? I was like, yeah, you're still drunk because you didn't get traumatized sober. Seriously. But anyway. Traumatized I've sober. I've earned it before and it's not that a good should be, idea. Traumatized sober could be the name of your memoir. That'd yeah. Be amazing. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> traumatized but, sober. See, but Gwyneth's dirt that she has in her garden in Brentwood yeah. is like organic, free-range dirt. Crystal. With, with chakra. Yeah. Brand, yeah. It totally is. But, Sparkle. But, but all just. Cosmic. Yeah, cosmic Stardust. moon dust. Well, she has that moon dust shit. That's yes. also amazing. I mean, again, she lofty, lofty, lofty purification. 
fashion. All of it's amazing. This you is know, like an infomercial for her site. No, we're kind of laughing at her too, but yeah. I mean, she's got a point. And again, we're not telling you that Gwyneth is awesome. We're telling you learn from this bitch to monetize yourself because you need to live. You need to Because eat. she's, yeah. Because she's, she's doing it. She's not starving. I mean, she looks like she's starving, but she's not starving. Yeah. I mean, she hasn't eaten in like six months. <laughs> Whatever. But, but that's, that's not because choice. it's not available no, to her. Exactly. It's that's because she's not eating. Exactly. But the grounding thing, I think that that's a good lesson too. Like learn to kind of go back to your roots, learn to take a break and kind of like take it outside. Like outside, take it outside is, is major. Get you know, a different just, sensory experience. Exactly. Like I think the grounding thing kind of makes Makes you concentrate like for those of us who don't walk barefoot that much which mm -hmm. I walk barefoot a lot but it's a new sensation yeah and I think that it kind it of is. causes you to look at new things like some people walk I've seen people here in Marin because we're in Marin yeah walking through the woods barefoot <laughs> and they're taking a forest bath have you heard of that <laughs> okay. well you know who started that whole the forest walking bath? barefoot thing no, was no. Wayne Dyer mm. yeah he gave up his shoes oh and my God, so amazing. yeah and he just like he did this whole PBS show called like Into it. the Dow or whatever. And it's good. I actually owned it. I mean, it's super new age. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's our, but, our life. Right and now. he basically takes uh, a verse of the Dow, mm -hmm. Dow Te Ching, mm -hmm. and he does like he lives that verse for like two or three days. So he goes wow. through the whole thing and then he does a whole program I on it. I love it. it. I yeah. love it. But you know, that's something that so everybody- So Gwyneth stole that from Wayne. She totally stole that from Wayne. And I think that a lot of people, like if you look at a lot of other YouTubers, like they're stealing that too. Yeah. Except they're stealing really pop culture-y things. So they're going like, they're going to Marie Kondo. They're going to like, and again, all of these latest pop culture trends, mm. minimalism, Marie Kondo, Gwyneth Paltrow, they're all about purification yeah. and purity and rules. 12 rules to do this. Yeah. 10 ways to do that. Like it's all about commandments. And mm. I find that fascinating. So, it is fascinating. Yeah. I mean, culturally, you know, we've kind of replaced God with capitalism. Totally. And But we're still looking for the same thing. We, we are. I mean, we we still, we're still we still looking for, we're seeking out. I mean, we have been since mm -hmm. we've been evolving. We had, you know, mythologies yes. and... Greek gods and you know we I mean this even even the Marvel you oh know, my god the Marvel movies yeah, I mean, are all based on these like it, the Harry hero Potter. yeah these all hero archetypes that mm -hmm. are battling good and evil and light and dark yes and, and we need that we we crave, we that. crave it because that's how we evolved yeah we, and we're gonna touch on that whole thing with the light and dark we, and the enemy like we're gonna touch on that in yeah. our how to build a cult as a creative yeah we don't because that's absolutely part of it. Yeah, it's part of it. We we seek it out. Mm -hmm. And so if you can build your brand around these concepts, yes. these religious-like exactly. concepts, That's, then why you, not? Why the hell not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, so, you're creating a service for people. Yes. I am, and I've well, and I've started to see that 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 it needs to be, I mean, in some ways some of that cult mentality, the belonging is so important but you were mentioning something funny i was laughing at one of gwyneth's most weird things which was the stickers that she claimed that nasa astronauts were wearing oh yeah i've had patients balance. i've yeah. had patients that and are wearing incredible. the stickers i couldn't believe that somebody yeah. would actually buy it but then again i can't believe that anybody would actually buy oh it. no i mean we live in marin county there is like there is something for excess everyone. money there, there is excess like, money but and and people are willing they're like they're willing to try it. They're like the crazy the sounds. They're gonna take the risk. Yeah, take the like, risk. Maybe it works. Who knows? You know. I mean, so that's fascinating to me. Well, these <laughs> are people that have all their basic needs met, like that ten times very, over. Well, that is very so, true. But so then they're able to kind of like pick ooh, and choose. They and can kind of search for things. Yeah, they can. Mm -hmm. They can kind of go. You know. What is it? Abraham Maslow had the the pyramid, the pyramid of self actualization, yes. Yes. and you know he talks about the the bottom of the pyramid is yes, like needs. basic needs, yes. food, water, mm -hmm. you know all those things, safety, a roof over your head, yes, and then you know they're all all of these cults, all of these marketing approaches, mm -hmm. they're all working towards the 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 top of the pyramid yes. of you know Abraham Maslow's. Mm -hmm self-actualization pyramid yes. so you, these higher mm -hmm. aspirations for the self absolutely that and, you, and right. that is what religion is that is what religion is and that's something that you just keep 
trying towards that. See, this is the beauty of, we were talking about these millennials. You're, it's becoming, nev you're never going, you're never going to get there. You're never going to arrive. There you go. So that's the thing with these nuns, these yeah. millennials becoming nuns. It's because they want more. They want deeper. They want, <laughs> this is sounding dirty, but they, they <laughs> want to get closer and closer to something that they just cannot seem to approach unless they give themselves in wholeheartedly. And with the right. Paltrow thing or with anything that's similar, Tony Robbins, you can't go to mm -hmm. one of their events and not drink the Kool-Aid, literally, which is a horrible cult reference, but true. You need to give it your all mm -hmm. or else you're not going to be tending towards that extreme, mm -hmm. you know, achievement of those impossible goals. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that I think that as creatives we do not need to look at. However, as creatives, we also need to realize that when people are looking for our creative products, mm -hmm. these are people who are the Gwyneth people. They're people who have taken care of their basic needs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because they well, have I that do kind of think, depending on what it is, I do think if you're going to do something, you have to kind of fully embrace what it is. Like, Completely. Like, yes. you know, this Shawn Mendes concert that I went to, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, it's going to suck, and it's going to mm -hmm. be this, that, and mm -hmm. the other. And I had all these preconceived notions of... You know, just going to a middle school yeah. type of activity. Yes. And and I was, you know, completely blown away. And well, that's always pleasant and when I you fully, go to something. And, and I fully embraced it. And yes, I and well, I the best. You know, I sang along and I danced and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let him take me. Let it take me away. I'm gonna let him take me, me for two and a half let hours. Let the spirit move me. Yeah, and and I did, and I can see the benefit of. Oh yeah. It's almost like you go on a trip. Totally. Like a psychic trip. Totally. And then there's the energy in the room or in that big space. Like if yeah. you look at a Tony Robbins conference, everybody's jumping up and down. He has them all yeah. jumping up and yeah, down yeah. and screaming. They, Sean did the same thing. And he wanted everybody clapping and he wanted everybody that's, singing. And that, that's your part it's of powerful. the way It's powerful. It's yeah. powerful. You're part of the way it's there. Powerful. Once you can move everybody in unison, once mm -hmm. you have everybody participating in this thing, that's like why Gwyneth... It's she a had, god -like. It is. It's a god-like thing. And that's why it's a like, godhead. Gwyneth had everybody... You know, piercing their ears and getting these vitamin B shot, B twelve shots in their ass. What? Like everybody's pulling their pants down and getting these shots, and I'm like, that's pain. It's you yeah, know, pleasure. They're all doing well, it. Well, in fact, at Kaiser, when you know, they, I was like, no, I don't want fourteen vaccines for my yeah, maybe you not. know, my kid today. Uh -huh. You know, they, they'll they'll say, well, we don't want to give her more pain. What was it? Pain memories or pain. Oof. And, we're all about and no, but I mean, pain I, avoidance. That's what we're about. I know, but I think I think what she's doing is really smart because it's associated with this like thing that's positive mm -hmm. and that's going to mm -hmm. illuminate you. Right. But it's associated with pain, I and mean, it's yes. exactly what the Catholics did when they would do. Yeah, the punishment, when the they beating, would, like, beat the flagellation, and, yeah. the, and the starvation, and you know, and that's what Tony Robbins. I keep bringing it. It helps up. you release endorphins, and then you become it, it more and more but bonded he, to it. You get bonded to it, but you suffer. Like with Gwyneth, she does the cleanses. She does yeah. all these things, and yeah, it's exhausting. And then you're not thinking straight. You know, Tony it's Robbins disorienting. Also, yeah, it's disorienting, and that's another big thing is the disorientation. Mm -hmm. So if you're creative and you're doing something a little weird and you're, if you're going to have a live event, like go all in with your weirdness and your disorientation, because that's mm -hmm. going to ultimately help you to take your audience further. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm terrible because I'm Well, I really do too. think that people are going <laughs> out now, not so much, you know, malls are dead, you know, people oh, are God, going yeah. out for experiences. experiences. They want experiences. And they want to be yeah. transported. Completely. And, and I, Completely. you know, I think that that's essentially what the next move of the creative is going to do. Absolutely. They're going to, you know, and it, it's, it's been like that in the past. I mean, if you ever go to Europe and they have the street performers, yes, same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. You get kind of transported. You get transported. And I think that that's really a big lesson is that, and we were talking about the whole taste thing and the taste thing, meaning that you're associating different creative expressions, like, you know, eating and drinking and art and music and putting it all together. Understanding your palate. Yeah. Understanding your palate, but also being able to put different you know, kind of genres together so that you yeah. can create something new that's an experience mm -hmm. that people will go and want to, they'll, they'll be seeking out that feeling again. Yeah. And I think that that's really important. And also the community that you're building around it yeah. is major. And if you can see that you're part of this community and that you belong, you know, all of a sudden that, so that's, I think that's a good little segue. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. of um, a couple friends of mine, you know, they were, they were telling me, I was, I saw my friend's husband as a patient, mm -hmm. I can't name any names, but mm -hmm. He was telling me about how him and my friend follow this chef around who has all these like explosive, you know, he'll get hired on at some really nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. He'll, he'll 
you know, create something really amazing, blow it out, and then he ends up getting into some horrible argument and getting fired. Uh, no, he usually, like, gets in a huff and walks out. Oh, wow. And he was like, wow. we follow him from restaurant to restaurant That's because awesome. every time he does this, he creates some new amazing That's, food. And he's like an evangelist. Yeah. And like when he leaves, his movement stays behind still. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's like when you have a concert and they're moving around, like I think that's key too. I yeah. mean, like bring your creative expression to different markets. Yeah. You know, it, I was like, like really? Thing. You do that? I wouldn't do that. Well, that's kind of fun. I kind of like that. Yeah. No, but it was good. Next. And he, he was like, oh, yeah, we've followed him to four different restaurants now. Wow. And and that's and he was saying, like, it's amazing what he creates every time he goes into a new... What's that novelty in like trying he to... he needs it. Yeah, he, he needs he, it. He, he needs the he pivoting. He gets bored. He pivots. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So, okay. So now let's get to our thing of how to become very culty as a creative or creative entrepreneur. So what are the actual steps? We're mm. going to break it down for you guys as to how you literally build a cult for your creative expression or for your creative product. Yeah. This um, is the same thing as I would say, I would argue it's it's it, it's the same thing as building a brand. It is. It's the same thing yeah. as building a brand. So yeah. building a brand and building a cult, same thing. Same we're not, right, we're, so we're saying straight up, we're, we're saying don't do Jonestown, like yeah. no Kool-Aid at the end of this one, no like, you know, Moon, what was that cult that they all off to themselves and plastic yeah, bags don't do that. Don't that's, do that. No. Do this for good because people, that's the whole thing with the Gwyneth Paltrow thing. They love being transported. They yeah. love what's happening to them. So if you want to be successful as a brand or an artist. Yeah, or a create creator, a positive movement towards. Yes, do it for good. That brings people together for, for the exactly. good. For good. I exactly. mean, that was what Shawn Mendes, he's like, everybody's totally. here for music. And, and, and it was true. It's like music is one of those things that, you know, AI might take over some aspects of music, mm -hmm. but however, not all of them. Not all of them. It's, it's really... Well, that's where know. the taste comes in, is that you can have all the expertise in the world, but look, so the example that Andy Pizza was using yeah. was uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. The guy's voice is super jacked up, but what he does with that voice Yeah, is his really, sensibility, the yeah. way that mm -hmm. he promotes it through the music totally. is, yeah. you know, no, and like he said, no one was like, oh, this guy's going to grow up yeah. and sing, oh, be, a be a singer, singer because yeah, he has this incredible not. voice. No. No, mm -hmm. he was the last guy that you would ever 100%, think. Yes. And he was saying that it's not about talent. Mm -hmm. It's, it's about, about the taste and the totally. the the experience. Well, really Completely. the feeling that you bring to it. Exactly. So, okay, so, let's anyway, start. Let's build the cult. Let's build a let's build a cult. Let's okay, let's cheers. Build a cult. Cheers, cheers to building cheers a to cult. The building the cult. Hell yeah. So, what are you thinking of this drink as we drink more and more of it, by the way? Oh, it's getting warm. Oh, shit. It's still not bad. It's, it's still refreshing. Good. It's, it's still good. refreshing. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's no really complaints. helping my sore throat. Exactly. We're it, not feeling high, we promise. No, I I no. mean, I feel nothing with this. I'm like... <sighs> feel nothing. I thought empty maybe... Empty inside. I feel empty inside. <laughs> I need a cold. I, I need, need to belong to, to something. Exactly. Help so, me belong. So, yeah. So, we promise you that you're not going to be feeling anything crazy, but it is really a tasty cocktail. It's, it's really nice. It's and, refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. And I so felt like it, you know, it, mm -hmm. it held the theme quite lovely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So what do we do, number one, to create our cult? We determine our difference. Yes. How are we as a creative? So Gwyneth was like, how am I different? I'm different because I love to tell people what to think, what to wear, what to do, where to go. That was her difference. And her difference was that she was a little white woman. Woo -woo. Well, and her difference is that she's kind of uh, what we say, Bruja Blanca. Yeah. She's yeah, kind she's of a like white a white, witchy. she's a white witch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she is... You know, she basically, I would say she's very mainstream. She is very she mainstream. She doesn't look edgy. Time. She doesn't no. look. Right. But she's new right. agey. Yes. She's into crystal healers. Mm -hmm. And she just but went. But she's, exactly. She, and she went for it. She put the pedal to the metal. Exactly. And like, look at Tony Robbins. Like, how is he different? He's a giant. He's a little hyperactive. He's got that yeah. crazy horse voice of his. And he can sit there and just yell at you and try yeah. to like, and that's his difference yeah you know he wrangles people he wrangles people into this yeah. thing and then i mean you just got if you look at any of these people look at marie forleo how yeah. is she different she's this little italian american woman who started off as a dance instructor yet yeah she's now like a business 
coach. No, that makes and sense. And she does it with her high energy. She dances around. She, you know, and that, and she's got great hair. That's her other difference. So find your signature. So find your why. We always talk about Simon Sinek, right? Sinek. Or, yeah. yeah. He was a, he find was one of my past pocket A crushes. past pocket. She yeah. rotates through them so fast. I know. Fast. And they it's don't get, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop pot crushing on you. Oh, I because, think she will. I think she will. Next episode. We have a lot of wait. episodes to yeah, get just, through. Just you wait. So, I mean, as long as they're all good. <laughs> right? Exactly. So find your why. You know, yes. and, and Andy, let's talk about Andy Pizza. He's an illustrator. He's got this funny, like, Midwestern, you know, Jewish boy. Yeah, he's from Ohio, like me. You like know you. what, Andy? Oh. oh, see, so you're finding that similarity. Mm. You're finding that belonging. I see I'm what you're doing. I'm definitely, I see. She's getting yeah. sucked in. Yeah, I am getting uh, sucked in. So, yeah, so find your why. Find your what. Like, what is it that you are? Why is this important? Why are you into this? Yeah, and then kind of find Why the a, hell are you into this? Exactly. And yeah. why do you want people to get into this with you? And what is the lifestyle that that is pushing forward? Like, what's the lifestyle? So that if you're a creative, if you're a painter, the lifestyle is, you know, you want people to be surrounded by beautiful things. Yes. If you're a foodie, you know, you want people to be enjoying a good meal with yes. friends or whatever. And what is it about that that's important and why? So you find that. And yeah. that's what cults will do. They will find like you recruit followers by really having a clear vision of who that follower is and why you yeah, want to target Yeah, you know them. your why and mm -hmm. they, and it aligns with their it why. It aligns with their why or what they wish their why was. Yes, or what they wish their why right. was. So it's very, that's, right. that's it's aspirational. Yeah. It is, it's aspirational. So trick number two to building a cult. <laughs> now you've got a few people so I'm gonna give also a little um, example for example Harley Davidson which is yeah. like a very cult brand um, they're not about just buying a motorcycle no it's they're a about lifestyle being free and being rebellious yeah. and being cool like, being loud and doing what they you're want there and your freedom and you're American yeah. That's Harley Davidson. If you, you know, don't care about the freedom you're in America. You're on the open road. Right. But if you don't care about some of those things, you're going to end up with a Suzuki or a BMW bike. Yeah. But that's a very different person. A little more quiet. You that's don't want to hang out with the rough guys. Exactly. So that, and see, you just said hanging out with the rough guys. Those are your people. Yeah. Well, and they've tapped into these. Exactly. To they've, these they've notions of masculinity. Totally. But now you just said those rough guys, those loud guys. That's our next step is we're targeting the extroverts. Mm. So a lot of people are going to talk about, you know, influencers. Extroverts are more than just influencers. Yeah. They're the people who are yappy who are going to be talking about They're things. talking to everybody. They're natural blabbermouths. And yeah. if they're enthusiastic about it, they're going to be talking to them. So a lot of these cults, like what they do is that they're going to bring people in who they think can align with them. They're going to have them meet with a person who's their extrovert mm -hmm. or their, you know, invite them to a cookout invite them to something kind of normal, mm -hmm. get them into the mainstream stuff before you really start to, ex you know, ex before you start to, you know, express the really crazy shit. Yeah. And by this point, that extrovert has really schmoozed you into thinking like, hey, why, you know, why not? Yeah. And then they're also going to talk about it, you know, in all these different places. Right to expand your vision. And you were talking about even your dental office, there's there's some extroverts. Well, yeah, I was noticing the ratio of extroverts to introverts, mm -hmm. and I was talking about how, you know, there's certain things that, you know, I, I feel like the extroverts, if they are left mm -hmm. to, you know, if they don't have something to do, yes, they find something spiraling. to do. It's oh, the yeah. same. It's, it's the kids in class that don't yeah. have anything to do. You that need are a to get those extroverts smart. first. You want mm -hmm. to get to them. They need you, to be indoctrinated. They need to be indoctrinated, mm -hmm. and they need to know what you know. You need to mold them and and mm -hmm. get them to speak about the brand, talk about totally. you know, and kind of embody that. They you they need to be figureheads for the brand completely. Right? So you know who did that really well. Mary Kay Cosmetics. Oh, very so much Mary so. Mary Kay, very it was the big so. brush, big hair, big, oh, honey, you know, ladies yeah. who were completely espousing this whole Mary Kay yeah. world, you know, too much lipstick on, and they're like, but this is the way you want to be. It's so awesome. Yeah. Driving a pink Cadillac around. Yeah. It's I mean, very ostentatious. Super ostentatious, and this is what works. And this is why, like, you know, the Gwyneth thing, you know, these people who are speaking out, Everybody wants to dress like them. Everybody yeah. wants to be them. They're standing on stage. They're expressing. They're being given a voice. So it, a, an extrovert loves to be given a voice. Totally. So that they can impact others. So like with Gwyneth, she gave these quacky doctors yeah. and these so-called experts who didn't have a medical degree or who yeah. didn't have, she gave them permission to now speak. Become to experts. An, to become an expert and to influence Under the all umbrella these of goop. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. 
So now, step number three, you've got people on board, you've got your extroverts that are kind of, you know, winning them by telling the yeah. story, but now you love bond them. You love bond them. You I tell love, them love that bonds. you accept them with all their flaws. You freaking love them. It's like the Christian religion, yeah. accepting the sinner, loving the sinner. You're telling them that they couldn't possibly disappoint you, but that they really want to become better and better to deserve your undying love. Yes. Right? Yes. As a creative, I'm trying to figure and out And this is what, this is what the divine spirit wanted for you the right, divine spirit right. wants you to live up to your greatest potential yes and you are so and, loved that yeah. you should have that potential so like if i mean he's he so loved you that he gave his he gave only his begotten life, son oh and his only begotten yeah right i mean, I mean that, yeah. that's like the only Poor baby jesus that, yeah Poor baby jesus so. <laughs> <laughs> hey sue's christy so yeah i mean it's it's definitely the same oh yeah completely and also but see here's the interesting thing you're not telling them to change. You're telling them that you love them. You want them the to way they are more themselves. Mm -hmm. You want Why them to become even more themselves. That? Because you're perfect the way you are. Oh. <laughs> There'll be like a side. Yeah. There'll yeah. be like a side link to <laughs> my God. how can... to do the love bomb <laughs> successfully. You, you could never disappoint me, Micah. You're perfect. Oh my God. And I just you want you to be this? even more perfect. I want you to be yeah. able to express yourself as you are. I feel like I'm more. being indoctrinated into no, creative never. happy hour. Never. Because I never just show up because I want to, right? No. I'm like, like there's yeah, drinks, yeah. there's drinks. She's like, I'm there. there. I'm like, there's, I got you some special hummus, so you yeah. feel better. Oh my god, I, I'm such an easy. Yeah, I'm an easy convert. So it's amazing. So that's the thing where you, this is where you learn to know your converts. Yeah, you get to know your audience and find out what makes them tick. Yeah, and tell them that that's exactly what you love about them. At the same time, this is not just a manipulative thing. This is that you find out what makes them tick and what their aspirations are, what their dreams are, what they really so are. So you can facilitate helping them Thank reach yes. their higher potential. Yes. Their so, self-actualization. Right. So if you're not looking at it in yeah. a, you know, just a greedy, capitalistic way, you're actually trying to help them. This makes it a lot easier as a creative to sell things to people because often creatives have a hard time selling. Like yeah. I know that I always had, you know, I had a shop and I had a, and I had a really hard time selling. But when you convince yourself as the creative that yeah. you're providing something of value that's going to help yeah. them to make their life better, it, that's why in a shop you say, how can I help you? Yeah, they need what, they need what you're selling. You need the jade egg, mm. baby. You need it. <laughs> you do. I mean, it's clear I mean, to me that your pelvic floor is... I kind of is, want one. Is, <laughs> or maybe is, a jade roller for my face. Like, yeah, I do want one of those. Me too. I know. It's so bad. I do want one. I feel like Birthday I would present glow, list. Right? I know. We can like gift each other jade rollers. It would be amazing. So, yeah, like, so, is this a roller or is this an egg? Exactly. You just never know. But this is a thing how you kind of start to bond. Then there's the next step is heavy interaction. Mm. Once you've got them just a little bit, keep them engaged. This is where, you know, in a cult, you're going to be doing games and songs and charades yeah. and all this shit. In your creative life, you're going to be sending them really useful emails. You're going to yeah. be sending them special You're constantly deals. reminding them that you're there. You're reminding them not only that you're there, but that you love them, that you want to help them, that you yeah. want to hear from them. This is the same thing that happens early on when you're dating someone. Oh, totally. Like, like when you're into each other you up, and you're yeah. like, they're constantly reminding you that you Always. don't want to date no, anyone else. you don't. You know who does this really well, this whole constant reminder that they're there, is Ramit Sethi. Do you know him? No. So Ramit Sethi, or Sethi, is this Indian guy. And I discovered him when I was first going through this whole like thing of trying to build a membership site. Yeah. This guy started off, he went to Stanford University. Mm -hmm. He was this dorky little Indian guy. Yeah. And he ended up going off on this entrepreneurship thing. And he has learned how to through membership courses and just all this stuff. He started, he did I Will Teach You To Be Rich, mm. which was like, you're like, really? He's gonna teach me to be rich? Well, the dude now, he's like super buff. He's got like, you know, a coach. He's got this empire. You put Ramit on repeat. Huh? I put Ramit on repeat. You look at his, you know, emails that he sends and the way he interacts, the way he asks you and says that he cares about what you think and he wants to offer you value and what do you want and what do you think? I read every email. I mean, if you read his copy, it is a master class in how to make your client, your customer, or your convert feel like you really hear them mm -hmm. and, you know, want to deal with them. And it's amazing. The guy is, he is the master class. Like, that's incredible. I mean, his whole series of how, and he can keep Hashtag selling Hashtag Ramit on repeat. 
I like that. We're gonna we're gonna put that down. We're gonna yeah. tag him on this. Yeah. And this is that we're gonna we're gonna listen to Andy Pizza. We're gonna just tag every single person we talked about. Well, I think not Gwyneth. We're not gonna tag her. <laughs> she doesn't need our tag, right? No. And and also the other thing that when we're talking about the interaction, how can your customers interact with each other? Right. So this is where your Instagram account, you know, your customers are going to be commenting and maybe they can mm. start to feel like they're interacting with each other. Yeah. And like they're getting this little club going. Right. And this is what, and this is where we go into the lingo and the icons. Right. This is where um, My Favorite Murder, the podcast does so well. They've got yeah. their catchphrases. They call it themselves murderinos, all of their fans. Yeah. They share fan art, yep. you know, and this is incredible. And this is where Apple with the little Apple logo yeah. was, you know, everybody's like, oh my God, you're, you're Harley Davidson. Like if you're wearing a Harley Davidson t-shirt or jacket, that's iconic and you belong. Right. You know? So for us, we've got like, you know, get drunk on the creative possibilities and mm. cheers. I think cheers is ours now. Like it's not, it's nobody else's. Screw yeah, them. yeah, it's ours. Yeah, but, but like that's the thing. It makes me think of we have other ones, but I know that I'm like shit. Um, but 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 I well I think we have some sometimes. Yeah, we'll we'll come. We should come up with a list. Yeah, but I think that that as a creative or as a brand, do think what is my icon? What's my logo? Mm -hmm. What's my you know? How what, am I recognizable? How am I recognizable? Like and distinguishable from other completely, brands? Completely, completely. Yeah. How can yeah. how can my customer or my you know, perfect, you know, person, my perfect patron or my, mm. my perfect cultee, how can they crave that image, that mm. iconography or the lingo? Like mm. Gwyneth, the lingo is, you know, all of these, you know, colonic or, you know, grounding or Jada, like did yeah. any of us it's know all, what that was before no, she made it's it something? It's all new age jargon. It's new age jargon, but it's then, crystal healer. You it know. is, but then you start using that jargon and you become part of the club. Yes. You become, you know, you become a convert. Yeah, and then you all of a sudden you start meeting community. people that are like, oh, you read that article too? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and you start feeling that belonging, which is, as we said before, business is about belonging. It is. And so you're creating that. So if you can, you know, if you're an artist, let's say, and you have a newsletter where you talk about things and you post things that some of your fans are doing or you post mm -hmm. things that some of your, you know, let's say, for example, one of my friends who's an artist will kind of post pictures of their art within a really well-decorated home. Mm. It becomes almost a competition. People want to belong to this thing of mm. like, oh, I have good taste. I want to show my home yeah. decor with their art, you know, put it together. Yeah, I'm knowledgeable and about I'm, good art. Absolutely. I'm knowledgeable. I'm tasteful. And I want to belong and I want to use the same lingo. Yes. It, the hashtags are another great example of lingo. Yeah. You know, keep use the same hashtags. Create your own hashtag. People will start using it. Yes. And you have arrived. You have arrived. Ah. So exactly. So and like how you know this, this is the recognizable thing. Like the the Gwyneth, you know, people. I think when they went to her events, they go to the in group health events. Yes. They're all wearing the Lululemons. They're all wearing the. I can't leisure. afford They're those. All, no, none of us can. But I wonder if you can get scholarships. <laughs> Some of these Okay, tomorrow I think I'm gonna call at lunchtime and see if I can get a scholarship. Can I get a scholarship? You should. Ask I'm like, that. I'm asking for a friend. No, say that your guru <laughs> needs to come with you too. And I'll be like, oh, I'll be wearing robes. Oh. Yeah. And okay, so, I'll be like, what's this? What if I can get us both in for half price? Oh, I'll go. I'll get I'll get my ears pierced and I'll B12 shots and I'll do it. Yeah, totally. So I'm probably low on B12 anyway. Exactly. Yeah. See, yeah, we're, like, we're already converts. Like maybe we're starting to just kind of get into uh, it. So now here's the next step. This is step number six. Oh my God. Who is your enemy? <laughs> Who's your enemy? Uh, speaking of enemies. Um, <laughs> Who's your enemy? My enemy. Mm, do you really want to know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it on. Oh, come on. Well, I, my enemy is, is those people that's like creativity is stupid. That is. That's exactly right. That's the creativity is yes. goopid. Goopid. <gasps> it's goopid. No, but that's totally it. Your enemy is the person who's saying that creativity is stupid. That creativity who's is against what you do? Absolutely. So Gwyneth, yeah. the and the you know Gwyneth's people, the enemy are the people who don't believe in her brand of bullshit. Yeah. You know the enemy is the doctor who's too mainstream who told you that you couldn't cure. You know that you really whatever. do need to take your antibiotics. Yeah, and you have or that, syphilis people exactly. take them. Which you do. You do really. Like Just the jade egg is take not. Take them when you've got a rhea. You cannot do no, no. a crystal you healing. You can't do that. So yeah, that's it. Like really make your cause clear. Yeah. Make it something that your followers or your fans want to fight for. 
Mm. You know, Sean Mendez, I'm trying to figure yeah, because out what you he fight, has. Because you fight for things that you love, right? Exactly. That's, that's yeah. what I always say. So if you're encouraged to fight for something from the yeah. get-go, you're going to love it more. You know what I mean? Like, let's say that you didn't love it yet, but that you're kind of on the fence. And mm. if there's a common enemy, mm. the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm. So, you know, it's, there's that. I'm wondering what Sean Mendez, I'm thinking that he might. Hit. Well, I think he's bridging. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he's bridging. bridging. You know, he, like I said, he plays beautiful piano mm -hmm. and uh, acoustic guitar. So he like plugged right. in guitar, piano. I mean, really simple, old school. Yeah, I think it's pop very, versus more classical yeah, stuff. It's, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, he was a huge fan of. Ed Sheeran, right? And he created a YouTube channel where he would just play Ed Sheeran covers. That's so funny. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then I'm trying to he then they, then he went on the Vine. Oh God. Then he came back and anyway, then he did these retreats. So he did these the retreats. retreats. See? One in Malibu and That's one on a mountain. That's in, very cool. I can't remember see? where. But he came back even, like Jesus. Even my daughter was saying she was like, "Oh, you can really tell the difference between the albums." Because the oh one album you can tell God. was done like more in Malibu and the other one was done more on a mountain. Wow. And she could actually tell you oh, wow. that they had this. See, that's amazing. Like if you give and people a discourse. And he tied it to all the art. Like I said, the, the art, mm -hmm. the flower. Mm -hmm. I'm you know, And I don't think it's him. I think mm -hmm. someone took him and said, he's he's got this like beautiful like mm -hmm. brownie. I mean, he looks like a sculpture of David. He does. He looks like you baby know, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, and yeah. he's just like this, he's the, the perfect specimen. He's a great product. Yeah. I mean, he even had this beautiful silk vest on. Like, and it was, it was rose, like rose, dark, dusty rose. Oh, it's okay. perfect. It's just it was vibrating fucking dusty rose. Right. It's, it's dusty vibrating motherfucking on rose. the right frequency. To oh my God. Like I mean, Everything, over. everybody thought of everything. Exactly. It was unreal. No, it's incredible. And, that's, and the that's thing is, product. is like his brand is completely marketed towards women. Oh, 100%. Completely. But, you know, here's I, the there thing, were we very few men there, and they right. were all dads of children. But we keep talking Girl about children. this. We could talk about Gwyneth Paltrow and that she appeals to women. We're talking about a lot of, like, we appeal yeah, to because, mostly because women. Because women are the they, consumers. They are a big consumer. And if a woman is consuming something, she might bring the dude along. Yeah. And then you've got people like Tony Robbins, who so I think appeals double to both. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Um, and Ramit Sethi, I think, also appeals maybe more to men than to women. But then you've got somebody like um, Marie Forleo, again, who goes, the super successful lifestyle guru cult brands appeal very much to women. To women. You yeah. know, Apple, I think, of course, appeals to the designery men, but it appeals to mainstream women. Yeah, and, and this and whole, I mean, design, even the t-shirt. The t-shirt was like this beautiful rose. See, see? It's I mean, it was so yeah. well. Oh, it's thought out. It, I mean, it was unbelievably Completely. crafted. So, good job, yeah. Sean Mendez. Good, good job, Sean Mendez. So I think it's important to state who your enemy is. Yeah. State, so like PETA, for example. Well, I think his enemy probably is the anti-beauty movement yes probably yes. the anti-beauty and the anti-nature and the anti-organic mm -hmm. like you know that like i said the acoustic of the tar you know there's well, so much people, synth synthesized music now i think it's the anti-pop movement actually that yeah he's, he's trying to prove that he can be popular and poppy without being completely unartistic and not beautiful and i think that's yeah. what he's fighting against because that's what my son really reacts yeah, yeah. to I because agree. he likes pop music and he feels that now we've got somebody fighting against the enemy of people thinking right. that pop music is not music. Yeah. And that No, and he yeah. did and he did. I felt like he yeah. he, hey. he won that so particular he won goal. it for you. Well, that's perfect. So you you know, we I was completely converted. I love it. I love it. So look at Peta for example, who can be over the top with the whole buckets of blood and rather go naked than wear fur and, and break stuff. into like animal they, yeah so they've by radicalization and by really citing the enemy they became much more mm -hmm. you know well known and they got more followers okay so now we've got this interesting thing of making the un the familiar unfamiliar and so what does that mean so it's kind of like how do you you know you make things i mean it's hard to but like basically 
I, well, well, something okay. that's recognizable. So, yes. you know, you'd be like, oh, I'm being scammed here. I'm being proselytized to. And, and then, then all of a sudden it's like, no, that's not what we're doing here. Totally. So what you do is that you're using the, the peer pressure. Yes. And you're using that past experience. You're using the buildup. If I was doing that, mm -hmm. I would be, you know, yes. I would be doing this. Yes. You know, and so, like, yeah. just constantly constantly bringing back that familiar and then the unfamiliar mm -hmm. becomes absorbed because what well, everybody else is doing it. Everybody right. else is getting a B shot, B12 shot in their butt. It's so common. Must be fine. It's so common. Right. You're, I you're being one. told. Like right, right now. Right? Like so, this, right this freaking second. I, I know. I'm feeling that way too. Then step eight is membership. Mm. And that's why, you know, you need to make things you know, you're trying to make it big, you're trying to make it a movement, but now we're getting it back down to membership. We're making it exclusive. Well, see, the thing about the membership thing is that there's a lot of brands, like this has been something that they've been talking about in marketing for a while. Mm -hmm. However, there are companies that will, instead of doing the work to get you converted mm -hmm. so that you you become a member and, mm -hmm. and it becomes like a natural yeah they'll have annoying you know. pop-ups all over the place and well it's just all of a sudden you're a member and mm -hmm. you don't even know how that happened yeah and so that's, whereas that's there a are point. companies like yeah. remember what's that massage place massage envy God, where, I wish like I you would go that. in and you just want to get a massage you don't want to be no. assaulted no. by a salesperson no. but they immediately start talking about the membership yeah which i don't want and so i never went back because no. they didn't do and the also, work but also they didn't feel exclusive they didn't feel like a no because you could walk in it's like and you have to yeah. do all of the steps yes up to this it needs one. to feel a little harder it, to it, it has get to be a natural progression Absolutely. to become a member yeah it has to be either a natural it progression. has to be your choice it's totally. not mm -hmm. it's not like this thing that they try to convince you to do yes it's your choice yes and that's why I feel that like pop-ups that pop up like while you're on a website like it's annoying yeah. as fuck because I agree if I don't want to sign up I'm not gonna sign up and it's only yeah. gonna annoy me and so as a creative or as an entrepreneur don't do that like but once don't be assaulting don't, don't assault be people assaulting. But once people are on the hook once they're on your Facebook page and they're you know kind of into it and they've been looking at posts and they've been yeah. and then they find out that oh my god there's this private group yeah and you need to be let in by another member yeah. all of a sudden you're like oh well that's you know that sounds better yeah I'm kind of interested in that so you know run orientations like you know a lot of these websites that are gonna be selling you something they're gonna be running orientations right. or if you're going into a gallery and there's an event and but it's a private private art show right and so you have to you know make a reservation you have to be invited right. all of those things make it feel a little bit more special to where you're like I'm in now I need to yeah. continue to be in by ascribing to mm. their things and by buying in and by being part of it and by mm. bringing more people in so that's a really interesting thing that like you know once once people are craving membership mm -hmm. how do you keep that mm -hmm. going you know so then we had mentioned this a little bit of learning from your cultees remember we'd said like what you know listening this whole radical love and acceptance mm -hmm. what do your cultees want calling them cultees I'm so bad they're clients your clients what do they want <laughs> what do they want how can you help them again there's so much learning that can happen and if they feel heard by what they want yeah you know as as a business you can easily say what do you care more about this or that or what do you think the pricing should be on this or what are you looking for in that or what's your feedback on this mm -hmm. Ramit Sethi again does this really well of being like please give me your feedback because mm -hmm. I've got this course and I can modify it for you Mm -hmm. And that's really great. And you can do that in any creative discipline. Mm -hmm. Even if you're an artist and you tell your clients, like, I can do a custom work or a semi-custom work, like, which color do you like or which subject do mm -hmm. you like? And sometimes that's a pain in the ass as, as an artist. You don't A but, lot of times. But it's a very much so. But, like, you do this with fiber frequencies mm -hmm. where you're like, well, I'll come in. I'm going to do this on your frequencies. A, it feels very exclusive and mm -hmm. memory and very mm -hmm. closed. And B, it feels like they're being listen to and that they're yeah. being catered to for them like accepted yeah. for them you're taking their vibes. you're taking a personal blueprint totally of, or, and you're making it or, into something beautiful yeah. you know and of value and then yeah. now it's got more value so now we've got the cult fertilizer so mm -hmm. once you've planted your little cult you planted a little seed how do you maintain that how do you harvest? how do you make it grow how yeah. do you harvest i love this so you focus on the person and make it all about them so no matter how large your cult grows you need to make sure that you can keep 
focusing on each individual. Yeah. So with a lot of the creative entrepreneurship things, this is like automation is going to help us do that. Oddly enough, mm -hmm. all the different little tags, all the little, you know, CRM systems can put tags for your clients so that they feel understood. They're getting that information mm -hmm. that they have asked for and that's really wise. If you're I mean, how about that whole, I mean, I was at my friend's house and we were looking at old photos on their, you know, they had these photo albums mm -hmm. and there was some kind of AI mm -hmm. involved in that oh, wow. where it would take different people from the photos and then do a, like a, um, what do you call it? Like a rotating photo. Oh, cool. Um, like a, what is it called when they do like a... a 360? Well, like no, they just panoramic? do like a, like they do a... Oh, like a slideshow. A slideshow. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was trying to think of. I'm like, what are you saying? Yeah. So I was like, I, and it, the weirdest thing was, is I was like, well, I'm in a lot of those photos. Are they going to do a slideshow of me? And sure enough, I, you know, I have, there Amazing. were all these photos of over the years of when mm -hmm. I was younger and when Alice was little and, you know, and it was like, interesting. And it was so emotional. Right. Because right. they, and, and they would give it a name. They would give it a right. name like hiking, yes. hiking. Well, we'll look at the iPhone, like hiking scenes throughout the years. Yes. Or, like something very romantic. Well, they would give Apple. it a title. That's Apple. And you're just like, yeah. oh my God, yeah. that totally sucked into that. Yeah. And, and then we would laugh our asses so off well. because they were like, they did this one person that we're just this one crazy friend of theirs. And like, it was like, ah, like every photo, he's just acting so like funny. a mania. Uh -huh. But they did this whole slideshow and you're just like, oh my God, that they capture the essence of the person. Well, that's Apple yeah. has with their facial recognition, they've yeah. done the photo albums. You can do a search and they learn what you want and they learn what the group, you know, they I can was, identify your face and scarily enough, if you're in front of their Apple TV, eh, eh, Micah's here, and all of a sudden you're feeling like you're sucked in because you belong and you've, you've been yeah. seen as a person. So now totally you're into it, in. yeah. you're buying an Apple TV tomorrow, you're part of the cult. So yeah. it's beautiful. Then you make mutual commitments. Mm. So if you've got, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to bring a service to your customer, you're not just saying, and we're the same with like Creative Happy Hour. Our commitment is we all want to discuss creativity together. Yes. We want to change together. We want to improve together. So it's a commitment that join us, give us that, and we're going to give you the value yeah. of where, you know, like, <laughs> ooh. Um, yeah. But yeah, but we're going to, yeah, but we're going to try to make, try to make each other better. Right. You know what I mean? So it's this like deal. Well, we're supporting each other. Supporting That's, each other. Yes. I mean, this is, That's what you know, Weight Watchers like, does. Yeah. You know, like they. Obviously, we haven't it's done Weight Watchers. So but well, not for us, but yeah. yeah it's, we've never um, done it, but no, I a, tried, lot, a lot of I, people have. No, I tried once, and I gained two pounds, even though I did it really well, and I started flipping out so much that they made <laughs> my friend take me out of there. It was really bad. <laughs> so yeah, don't have people like me in your club, because it's not good. Yeah. But I think the mutual... She'll hold you to, to yeah, all of it. No, but I think the mutual commitment is kind of a big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why... Priests were so effective because they were trying to be all perfect and they're showing right. you this model of I'm trying to be perfect Won't you try to be perfect for me? And the priest thing is another interesting thing for the fertilizer for cults mm. is that you use the priest model Where you have a bunch of people so this is where they do affiliate marketing mm -hmm. Or they'll do you know if you're having events and you have a person kind of taking care of each sector regional managers whatever mm -hmm. gallery like a gallerist can be your priest mm -hmm. this is somebody who embodies your brand or embodies your creative production yes and they're espousing those values yes and they are kind of an intermediary between you know you who's so super awesome you know the Gwyneth Paltrow and you know the the physical the, coach or the yeah. your practitioner or the you know jade egg manufacturer whatever that's you know the the intermediary so that's pretty much it we're gonna say again like don't you know make a cult for bad don't yeah <laughs> and don't try know. to get ahead of yourself and like yes. try to convince people you can't sell something no. to someone that they it, don't want to buy okay? exactly it needs to be you, organic you, they need to get sucked into yeah, it first they need to they need to decide for themselves yes. that they're interested in it exactly we're not telling you to make your cbd cocktail no no unless you really want it. one it's so delicious i mean i mean it's 
<laughs> I would if I were you. But. Right? But no. So make it, you know, knowing these rules, use them responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> and let us know what you think about Gwyneth Paltrow. Like, what are your opinions? She's so yeah. polarizing, you know, as was Kanye or anybody who yeah. is a figurehead of this kind. Yeah. Who else do you know who does this really well? Because we're interested. We're trying to learn as well. And, uh, and that's it. I guess we will join I mean, you guys. Glasses empty. Glasses so completely empty. Completely empty. So we will see you guys next time. Next time. Thank Getting you Getting drunk joining. on the creative possibilities. Thank you for joining us. Cheers. Cheers.